same, same, same sentence, Lord. Forgive me for even... How could they hate you, Lord? How could they say they love you, Lord? How could they claim to be your people and yet not want your very life living in them? They think they have the Holy Ghost, but they don't. They've been falsely taught that, 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 that just by, oh, I just accept Jesus Christ. I just bow my head one day in church. Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. You're my Savior. Amen. Go get baptized, the Father, and the Holy Ghost. I now I got the Holy Ghost. No, you don't. No, you don't. Falsely being falsely taught what the Word teaches us, folks. As I've talked about before, it's like taking a bottle. God, you find an old bottle in the field. You clean it up first. Say you're going to use it. You pick it up. That's just when, just when Jesus picked you up, justified you. So when Peter, started, when Peter heard God's voice, come follow me. That was justification. Sanctification, God begins to clean you up, work on your life. And God, kept, God was working on Peter all the time, getting him sanctified, getting him ready to be converted, to receiving the Holy Ghost filling in on the inside, which is the life of Jesus Christ. The church don't want that. They don't want that Holy Ghost. Jezebel don't want it. She's a prophetess. She comes after it. But they think they have the Holy Ghost because they feel God's Spirit. Folks, he, see, he said in the very end, he would pour, he'd pour our Spirit on all flesh, on, on your sons and your daughters. He pours His Spirit out. When the rain comes... And that little, that little weed out there in the field or that little corn stalk is, is, is dry and it's getting thirsty and it starts, oh, Lord, send the rain, send the rain. God sends that rain down for the corn. But the weeds get it also. They feel that same rain. Just because you feel God's Spirit and then you reject the blueprint. You reject His Word that produces the life change and conversion of receiving the Holy Ghost. Take the mark of the beast. <clears throat> so I'll put enmity, hatred, hostility, the persecution between the two seeds. Now, we read this, I think, last week. I can't remember. I, I read a lot of the same scriptures a lot of times, guys. But Genesis 4, verse 1. Adam knew his wife. Adam knew his, Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I've gotten a man from the Lord, which, folks, all life comes from God. And she, she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep. I'll put enmity between the two seeds. Here's the two seeds. Here they are. That's, that's chapter we just read. Um, I think it was two or three I just read. Three. Now we're getting in chapter four. The seeds are now coming forth, producing. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now think about this. I got I was earlier studying the word. Abel, they both brought things that produce life. Abel was taking care of sheep, which the sheep, you know, obviously were creatures that were living live creatures. They were they they needed, they needed a shepherd to overlook them. So he's looking over the sheep. Cain's bringing the, the he's a tiller of the ground, so he's bringing the things from the ground, vegetation and different things like that. Well, that, isn't that important? That, that also produces life. See how close it is? But life is in the blood. Life is in the blood. The Holy Ghost is in the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ that saves you, that sanctifies you, and then fills you. Amen? Both religious. Well, Cain, Cain was religious. Abel wasn't. Abel had a revelation. He was a child of God. Now, drop down to verse 15. Well, let me continue on here. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord, and Abel he also brought of the first season of his flock and of the fat thereof. As we know the story, God had respect unto Abel's offer, and he rejected Cain's. He rejected him. And he told Cain, if you'll, come, if you'll do like your brother, if you do like Abel, your brother, if you'll come the same way, You'll come the same way he went. I'll, I'll receive you. But if you don't, sin lieth at the door. Judgment. 
Cain wanted a part of it. He didn't want the Holy Ghost. He didn't want the Holy Ghost. But he wanted to be religious. He wanted to go to church and say that he's in church Sunday night, Sunday morning, Wednesday night, whatever. He's maybe more active than anybody. But rejects the life of God. Now, the Lord said unto him, Whosoever, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance, verse 15, shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any should finding him should kill him. So now he has the mark. He's got the mark on him. He's marked. And what's the very next thing happens? Because Cain rejected the Holy Ghost. He rejected God's way. He, come, he, he, he goes out from the presence of the Lord. Now, the church rejects the Holy Spirit, takes a mark, is separated from the presence of God. Matthew chapter 3. Take a drink here. <clears throat> I'm in part 3. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. God bless those who truly listen to the whole ministry for the right reasons. Here, here, here to grow in your walk with God. May God continue to speak to you. Matthew chapter 3, In those days came John the Baptist, verse 1, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is, for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness... Today, when I went down you know, to, the, to the park, and that root, seeing that tree, and then going out there in that woods, I thought of this. The Holy Spirit was just, I was quick and right to these scriptures. Prepare you the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. And what, what, what makes his path straight but this word? And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle, oh, I'm not going over, about his loins. And I, I told my son the other day, I was talking to him well, yesterday, and he said some things to me, and he's just like, Dad, if, boy, you are, you are definitely, you're, de you're set us. I mean, he, he sees it. I mean, he sees them. He sees in my life, because he has the Holy Ghost, that I was set aside for something very different. As I have been on this on this ministry path for the Lord, I joked around. I said, "Don't worry, I won't be wearing a a, a big uh, what's he say here a camel's hair and a I'd run around eating wild honey and grow my hair out long." I said, "Don't worry, I won't do that." <laughs> but um, anyways, his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all regions around about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confess confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, you that speak as the dragon, you who preach this false gospel that you've been preaching, you generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Because it's coming. Hallelujah. Bring forth therefore fruit, meat for repentance. Bring forth fruit. What what Cain do? Cain wanted to just bring fruit, but he didn't want to bring repentance, amen? He didn't want to come God's way as Abel did, hallelujah. Meat, fruit, meat for repentance, amen. And think not to say within, to, to say within yourselves, oh, uh, we have Abraham as for our father. Oh, we're the great, we're the Pentecostal church. We're the, we're the community of faith. We're the church of God. We're the non, we're the, we're the non-denominational church. We, we, we're, we're under the ministry of Greg Locke. We're Grace Fellowship. Then the list goes on. Don't say that you have, we have Abraham to our father. 
For I say unto you that God is able these stones, amen? And that's the encouragement he was giving me as he gives to you. We are not alone. God told Elijah, I got 7,000 set aside who are not falling down for this, 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 this final great enemy of the deception at the end time. They're staying with Christ the Word. They got the Holy Ghost. They love me. I'm going to come rapture them out of here. And now, and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Amen. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Now, I feel like I bounced around some of these verses. God was leading me all over the place. The root, the root, the root, the root. God is exposing the serpent seed. The spirit of Peter who is religious, follows Jesus, but then denies him, as did Peter. So close it will deceive the elect, if possible. Matthew 7, verse 15, Beware of false prophets. Pre prophets also means preachers, your pastors. Which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Amen? Remember the enmity? Hostility and anger, that seed has it inside them. There's hatred. They don't, they don't care about your soul. There's an agenda about what they're doing. Amen? They work for the enemy, folks. They work for Satan. They're Satan's ministers. But you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs or thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bringeth forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not forth, bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down, axed to the root. It's judgment time. He's bringing it down. And cast into the fire where her worm dieth not. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down is cast into the fire. Wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. See, I told you, like I just told you, that Peter's spirit, folks. If Peter wouldn't have went to Pentecost, you think God would have showed him different respect? I mean, heck, it's Peter. He did a lot of good things. He even got revelation. He did all those things. Peter had to go to Pentecost. He had to get the Holy Ghost to be saved. If he didn't, you think he would have been saved in the end? No. He would have been rejected. God's no respect to persons, folks. He don't, he don't, he don't have grandchildren in the kingdom of God. He's got sons and daughters. He's got children. That's it who are born in that kingdom by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, I have not prophesied in that name. At that point, Peter could have said, but Lord, I, I preached in your name. I did all these things. All these things I've done. And yet still denied him. But thank God the Lord said, I prayed for you, Peter, your faith failed not. God, help me to find those last few. Oh, Lord. And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Iniquity. Your agenda. you pushing your, your name. You know, got this guy, what is it, uh, Perry Stone. See, a true ministry, let me tell you something. As God has been showing me things, it, it reminded me this week over and I'm uh, so glad he does. A true ministry, true ministry of God doesn't point you to himself. He points you to the Word. 
He's not. He doesn't have links on his on his on his channel, asking you to buy his DVDs. He doesn't have websites to go buy his shirt. His shirts here. His church. His joke in town does. Filthy lucre's sake. He doesn't have a channel named after his name. As 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 uh, Perry Stone has his YouTube channel. It's called Perry Stone, because Perry Stone is building his own kingdom. His own agenda. What did John the Baptist say? I must decrease. And folks, I say this from the bottom of my heart going forward. I must decrease. This word, this anointing, this, 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 this purpose of my life that's, big, that's beyond me and the supernatural that's coming. He must increase. Hallelujah. Oh Lord. The church, the church that speaks as a dragon is, it, is the tree of knowledge of good and evil that shall be cut down. Genesis 2 verse 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. Revelation 22, 22 verse 2. In the midst of the street of it and on the either side of the river there was the tree of life. See, the tree of life is the Holy Spirit. We, are, we, we, we have to, the church is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It brings its, 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 its watered down teaching. It brings an educational approach. It tells you, go get your, your jab, okay? I'm going to try to watch algorithms so they don't press my channel down. It tells you all these agendas. It tells you to trust science, trust your doctor, trust pharmacia. It's the tree of knowledge of good and evil right in the church. It's focused on monetary gain and agendas and more buildings and more churches and more, and more expensive programs and youth centers and all these things. The tree of knowledge of good and evil that God is cutting down. Amen? Yes, He is. Hallelujah. Praise God. The tree of life is the Holy Spirit. It's the Word. It's the life of God living in you. Amen. In the midst of the street of it and on the other side of the river was there the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. She produces the fruits of the Holy Spirit, folks. The true get fruits of the Holy Spirit. Because many people can show love. That's deceiving. Uh-huh. But the love of God it rejoiceth in the truth and not in iniquity. It stays with that word. It, it loves the word. The other, the other love just, oh, it can be loving and do great things and feed the poor and be very, very deceiving and then turn around and reject that word and, and stick a knife in your dagger in your back and, 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 and gladly will turn in the end and persecute you and has no problem doing it. Because God said, I'll put enmity between the seeds, hatred, hostility. The religious seed against the true seed of God. For the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more, there shall be no more curse. <sighs> Amen. No more curse because God, the church has been dealt with. It's been burned up with fire. that speaks as a dragon, that preaches the gospel, that image, that mark of the beast. And the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. What's that mean? They have the Holy Ghost. They, they, they take his name. <laughs> they have his name. They pray in his name. They get baptized in his name. They cast, they, they say, Satan, get behind me in that name. They preach in that name. They, they live that name. Everything in their life is about that name. 
the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost living inside you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Proverbs 15, verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Tree of life. Because it speaks the mind of God. It speaks the word. Amen. A wholesome tongue. Oh, it's been feeding. It's got vitamin, all the vitamins in here. Vitamin A, B, C, D. Oh, all the vitamins you can ask. All the protein, and car, all, the, all the things that you need right here for your spiritual man is right here in this word to give you a healthy, wholesome tongue. A Holy Ghost tongue. Amen. But yes, we have to die daily. Amen. Because the flesh is still sin. God help us. But perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Proverbs 11.30 The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. There's that tree of life again. When you see the true Holy Ghost working in the life of a true believer, it just produces the tree of life. The tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. Amen. Amen. Because he's able to produce that tree of life. He that winneth souls is wise. Amen. As the Apostle Paul said, I became all things that I may gain some. That's always been my approach throughout my journey. And I was driving through town the other day. And one of the greatest experiences I've ever had in my life is I got to lead a full-blooded Jew to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I remember taking a salt and pepper shaker and a few things and trying to explain to him who God is and you know how it's one God and his name is Jesus Christ. Sitting at his kitchen table, he's a 90-year-old man, and he was, he was dying of cancer. But God let, let, allowed me to have that moment with this full-blooded Jew. And we prayed the prayer of salvation. And I think it might have been the next night he went in the hospital. I remember going to visit him at the hospital. He was down, you know, this was it, the end of his road. And I looked over at him and a song came to my heart. I will meet you. Sidney Bremen. I will meet you just inside the eastern gates over there. A Jew received Jesus Christ. We have to go to Jerusalem, brothers and sisters, right against the beast to find those, 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 that child of God and lead them out of it to Jesus Christ. This Jew accepted Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus Christ for his salvation. Just inside the eastern gates. Oh, Brother Sidney, I, we're not that, it's not that far, brother. I'm in heavenly places right now. I feel you in other dimensions, not that far from me. Oh, hallelujah. Just inside the eastern gates over there. I will meet you. I will meet you. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Now, Proverbs 3, verse 13. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchant, for that, for the merchandise is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. See, the, the church, she's focused on her money, her buildings, her gold, her monetary, the things of the, of the earth, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. She is more precious than rubies and all the things that, that Canis desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand. Right hand, hallelujah. There's again the authority. In her left hand, riches and honor, amen. <laughs> Both hands, hallelujah. And we're not talking about riches being Financially rich, folks. We're talking about spiritual riches. Amen. Her ways are the ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of back. That's why I put these scriptures. She's a tree of life. The tree of life. 
a tree of life, the Holy Ghost, the seal of God, the name in their foreheads, hallelujah, to them that lay hold upon her. Happy is everyone that retaineth her. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Brother Sidney's happy. Brother, I know you're not far from me right now. We're, we're, Bob, folks, we're, the Bible says we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Your loved ones are rooting you on. They're saying, you got this, little bride. Keep overcoming, little bride. Don't stop, little bride. Amen? Genesis 3 and verse 24. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Folks, the only way back to that tree of life is through this flaming sword of the word. Hebrews 4.12. Amen. It's the word. It's the complete word. that, that reveals. This word is a revelation of who Jesus Christ is, the name of God. Everything. And now that my son has been baptized, man, he just, that revelation is just, it's just, he's just, he's, he, he's just having, he's having a jubilee. It's beautiful. And praise the Lord. My daughter texted her today. She said, Dad, I will be there Tuesday for Bible study. And I said, I need a haircut. Because it's getting a little long. I don't look like John the Baptist yet. But uh, it is still hot out. I want to, you know, we're preaching. Lord, we're preaching to Lewisburg here in a few weeks. And I want to I wanna look respectable. Amen. Now, I got a last thought here. I'm sitting in this office the other day. And yesterday, uh, you can't see in the, on my floor. I have my floor covered with, I'm working on a mailing. I'm getting ready. It's going to take me weeks to do because I'm doing it, you know, one at a time by hand because I'm poor and I'm on a budget. Um, I, you know, I'm doing a mailing to every home in Lewisburg, even out in the country. I've never done this in seven years. I feel led to do it. And we're going to do it. Trust the Lord's going to bless and it's going to bring some financial blessing um, uh, to help me out here. But, uh, but as I'm working on this, I'm listening to Brother Bram's message, and I recommend it. It's awesome, great message. The mark of the beast, uh, the mark of the beast and seal of God. It's part one and two. He preaches it in California. Matthew 24. He talks about it, and he hits on it from a certain angle. But but the Holy Spirit took me even deeper to, in, the, in the Word here tonight, and I want to share this with you. My last thought, the greatest demon Satan ha he has is the Christian church. Matthew 24, 15. Let me just read the scriptures first, and we'll talk. When you therefore shall see, and may the Lord help you continue to, may God continue to reveal this whole message to his elect and help him understand the word. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation speaketh, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand it in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let him which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him that which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that which are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time there's a revelation here I'm going to show you that God gave me no nor ever shall be and except those days be shortened there shall no flesh be saved that's the truth folks but for the elect's sake us. Those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall rise false Christ, spake as a dragon. Christian church, the image. Stay with me. And false prophets and shall show great signs 
and wonders. You catch ear of it. You hear what's going on with that church? Man, they're, they're, people are getting, I've seen people getting slain in the spirit. There's things happening. Somebody, the other day somebody got healed. It's great signs and wonders. Things are taking place because God pours out his spirit. Remember, they're false Christ. A Christ means anointed. It's the Holy, yeah, it's the Holy Spirit, but they're false. Stay with me, catch this now, I'm telling you. Insomuch that were possible, they shall deceive it, because I've never, this is a different revelation. Shall deceive the very elect, behold, I have told you before. Now, I'll explain something to you. Let's go back in history for a moment. Look, look, you look at history under, under Titus, the, uh, King, I guess you would call him King Titus, under his rule, April 14th of 70. So we're talking 70. Way back. This is going way back after Christ. All right, came and went. During Passover, Titus laid siege to Jerusalem. May the Holy Spirit help you see what I'm saying right here. Okay? Now, there's a man named Esius Flores, loved money and hated Jews. What's going on right now at the end? All this is, folks, at the end of the day, all this is, you know, it's always about filthy lucre's sake. There's always an agenda for the money. Who holds the wealth of the world? The gold, Rome. He, she who hates Remember the enmity, enmity between the seeds, okay? Between the, the, the religious seed, she hates the true elect seed. Stay with me. As Roman procurator, he ruled Judea, caring little for the religious sensibilities. When tax revenues were low, money, he sees silver from the temple, the church. As the uproar against him grew in A.D. 66, there's a number six, he sent troops into Jerusalem who massacred 3,600 citizens. Now, why do you think Jesus said, here's the revelation, Flee it. He was, he was speaking, he sp the, word, the word, remember something, folks, things keep repeating itself, right? That moment in time took place. Catch this. He says, make sure your flight does not be in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Because the, the, the church, Lord, help me get this out here as it was hitting me. I believe a lot of you know where I'm going with this. 